Lulu, your film is advertised on the poster as based on a lie. So explain what that means. Well, uh, it, it was my way, I guess, to say this is based on a true story, but even the true story itself is about a lie that was told to my actual grandmother. What's wrong, Dad? Please tell me. When that is dying. She doesn't know, so you can't say anything. The family thinks it's better not to tell her. Why is that better? Chinese people have saying, when people get cancer, they die. The lie was that we were all coming home to China for the wedding of my cousin, but in fact, the wedding was staged by my family as an excuse to see my grandmother and say goodbye to her because she uh, had cancer and the doctor told her she had three months to live. And I understand the roots for this film came from a This American Life episode. Yeah, between writing it and recording it, it took about two months and as soon as it aired, within 48 hours, producers were calling me to make it into a film and what that did was it gave me the ability to pick the producer who would ultimately fight for my vision and my um, version of the story. And what was it about the story that was most important to you in terms of what you wanted to convey? I wanted to convey that it's not a story where there's a right or a wrong. It's not a story about plot. It's a story about what it feels like as a family when you are separated by an ocean and you start to change based on the country where you move to, you start to have different value systems. And then what it means when you go back to your home country and you see the differences between you and that family that you left and you still love them, but you see the world in very different ways. And so I didn't want to tell a story where it was all about the wedding and the banquet and uh, the broad comedy of that, or even, you know, it's a very high concept story and a lot of hilarity ensues, but it was very important to me to portray a specific type of humor and not a kind of humor where you're making fun of people or laughing at the family, but where you really are sympathetic to what they're going through. Well, I really like the way, because once they get to, to China, the couple that's getting married almost become like background elements, yeah. like scenes are happening in front of them while they're getting these wedding pictures taken. That's the brand of humor I was going for because, you know, weddings in some way or another are a type of performance, right, that we put on for our families, for our friends, and especially in China, that's the case. And at the same time that that performance is going on of, you know, the grandma herself putting on this show of a wedding uh, because she's so proud, the rest of the family is putting on a different kind of performance. They're performing a wedding for grandma in order to hide the truth that she's dying. And I think the juxtaposition of those two things is what made it both poignant and funny at the same time. Now, the character that Aquafina plays is kind of an alter ego for you? I suppose you could say that, yeah. <laughs> and so were you born in China and then grew up mostly in the United States? I was, yeah. And one of the scenes that I thought was really effective was when Aquafina's character confronts her uncle, I believe, about keeping the secret. Like, shouldn't we tell her? We, it's our duty to let her know what's happening. And he points out kind of the cultural differences. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about those kind of cultural differences that you wanted to highlight? Yeah, I think there's a fundamental difference between Eastern and Western culture. And I'm sure you can make a similar comparison with other cult many mm -hmm. cultures that are non-American, non-Western where I think that in America, we, we very much value the individual, freedom, truth, which all surround the values of for an individual. But in China, I won't speak for everybody else, but in China, it's very much about the collective. It's about family, it's about society. And there's this notion of the things that we do to carry someone's burden for them, that it isn't up to them to decide how do I deal with this and I must know so I can choose how to do it. Um, but there's, uh, yeah, just a collective vision and that's what's so beautiful, but it also comes with its own challenges and pressures. All right, well, that sounds great. Thank, Thank you, you very much for taking some time to talk with me. Thank you very much.